Right now, ready or not, winter is here. Live coverage of road conditions and experts remind us to get our vehicles ready for these slick roads. And Madison Street's crews have cleared snow from main roadways, but a spokesperson says they're facing some challenges with leaves still on the ground. Plus, the Sun Prairie Post Office will officially bear the name of the fire captain killed in the downtown explosion. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. Happy Halloween, everyone. Right now, the snow is done falling, and it's been cleared off the main roadways. This morning, though, slick roads caused plenty of slide-offs and a few accidents. And tonight, the main concern is really just how cold it is for those trick-or-treaters out there. We have team coverage tonight. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti with the very latest on the cold and the snow totals. Madeline O'Neill is talking road conditions in Sun Prairie and preparing your vehicle for winter. And Adam Duxter shares a Janesville small business owner's call for help after his commercial-grade snowblower was stolen. First, we go to Gary on the patio with your first alert forecast. Well, you can almost feel the temperature drop minute by minute out here. Skies have cleared out nicely, and with all that snow on the ground, now our temperatures are going to fall off pretty rapidly. Uh, officially, 3.9 inches of snow since midnight. That is our snowiest Halloween on record for the storm itself uh, because some of the snow fell before midnight. Five inches officially in Madison. And the forecast for the trick-or-treaters calls for temperatures to continue to drop. Skies will clear out. Temperatures will fall into the upper 20s, but wind chills could make it feel like it'll be in the upper teens. Current temperatures now are in the upper 20s to around 30 degrees, and the wind chills right now are in the upper teens to the lower 20s. By tomorrow morning, temperatures will fall into the upper teens here in Madison, but skies will turn cloudy. We'll see some rain and snow showers tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures will be warm enough to melt at least a little bit of the snow with a high of 37, but later on I'll take a look at a forecast that unfortunately includes more cold weather. A teenager faces an OWI causing injury charge and possibly more after crashing a stolen car on Highway 51 in the town of Dunn this morning. According to the Sheriff's Office, a 2011 Ford Edge had been reported stolen from Stoughton. The 17-year-old driver lost control of the car and crossed over into oncoming traffic, hitting a minivan head-on, then spinning out into two other vehicles. At least five people were transported to local hospitals with injuries ranging from minor to serious, but none is believed to be life-threatening. Police responded to multiple slide-offs on Madison's west side this morning on Raymond Road west of Muirfield Road. More than 10 cars were involved, and it took about two hours to clear them. There were no injuries. No children were hurt during a crash between a van and a school bus. This happened in Dodge County this morning. Sheriff Dale Schmidt says the bus was stopped on Jefferson Road in Rubicon to pick up a student. The van driver tried to stop but ended up rear-ending that bus. School administrators contacted parents, and another bus came to pick up those students. Most of us aren't ready for this kind of weather. That likely means our vehicles aren't either. Madeline O'Neill is live near Highway 151 in Sun Prairie with an update on road conditions and why you may be waiting in line a while to get your new tires. Gary's not lying. It's cold out, but now that the snow is done, the roads are looking a lot more clear around here, special, especially major roads like Highway 151 here. But if you were driving earlier this morning, you might have noticed something I did. I need tires a lot sooner than I thought, and a lot of other people are realizing that too. The snowfall and everything like that, cars are coming in left and right. An early entrance to winter weather means some rushed preparations. When I hear about snow on the way, I'm running, just running, making sure that we have everything stocked. Tire shops like Broadway Tire in Monona are slammed. I kind of like it when it's busy. Plucky for tire tech Mike Green <laughs> seems to be changing tires for a while. So once I get it prepped, just wait for the tires to come in, and then on to the next one. The rush comes as drivers hurry to make sure they'll be safe on the road. That's usually why it gets busy, especially with the blizzard and everything coming like that. You know, people are sliding all over the road and, you know, so many repairs and things that have to get done. So definitely gets busy for sure. I'm sure that uh, a lot of people weren't ready for it, uh, snowing on Halloween. Wisconsin State Patrol Sergeant Joe Lowe says they're keeping busy responding to accidents as many people drive in winter weather for the first time in a while. He cautions even those who feel prepared not to get too confident. And some will get very comfortable and depending on what type of vehicle they're driving, like if it's an SUV or an all-wheel drive vehicle, they will feel that they have more confidence to operate that vehicle in a, maybe a faster manner. 
and it's not true. That vehicle can do the same thing as any other vehicle. It can go off the road, it can slide, and you can crash. Lowe says it's likely many drivers haven't had time to prep, whether that means new tires or cold weather emergency kits. I think it'll probably uh, get their attention today that uh, they need to uh, get that done right away. On the bright side, preparing early means you'll be ready to roll once winter actually starts. Tires make a huge difference. Broadway Tire in Monona was so busy today they had to stop booking appointments for today and start scheduling them for tomorrow. Their location here in Sun Prairie was equally busy and can probably plan on a booked schedule tomorrow mm. too. Maddie, thank you. It has been a busy day for City of Madison Streets crews. A spokesperson says they're typically ready for snow by this time of year, but there are a few obstacles right now. Leaf collection is still going on and sand barrels aren't out on sidewalks yet, but crews have been out salting since midnight last night and they're asking drivers to be patient and alert. And in those neighborhood streets too, they get the added thing of the lots of leaves are kind of mixed in with the snow. The snow earlier this week and this one pulled a lot of leaves down with it. So that layer of snow, leaves and wetness is making some pretty slick spots out there. Plows are waiting until trick or treaters are done tonight to clear neighborhood roads and lay sand down. Thousands are taking out their shovels and snowblowers. The Janesville man says he was met with an unpleasant surprise yesterday that could hurt his small snow removal business. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us live from Janesville. Adam. Yeah, well, Eric and Charlotte, things are looking pretty good right now in Rock County. After a fair amount of snow this morning, the streets here on the south side of Janesville are clear and traffic is moving well. One thing that is not clear, however, is what's going to be next for Casey Walmer. So after uh, he had his commercial grade snowblower stolen from the Rock County Job Center parking lot just yesterday. Now Casey works as a small business owner clearing snow for folks around Rock County and that means this morning he had to clear about 20 driveways using a shovel and he says he's not quite sure what would make someone want to steal his snowblower. And I got my truck went to pull out and I heard a, you know a clatter sound. I was like what was that and looked back and my shovel had fallen. Well, that's when I knew my snowblower wasn't there. Now he says the snowblower that was stolen from the back of his truck is a commercial grade snowblower, meaning it's not something you would find in most stores. And in addition to that, he says, were he to try and purchase a new one, it would likely put him out a few hundred dollars. And tonight he says, if you are the person that took it, or if you know where it is, please just to give it back and he'll take it back, no questions asked. All right, Adam Ducks are in Janesville live tonight. Adam, thank you. Well, if you were not enjoying the snow, here <laughs> is someone who is. Henry Vilas Zoo posted this video of Nunique playing outside today. If you're frustrated about having to clear the snow off your car or your sidewalk, hopefully this will get you to smile. A reminder, you can get hourly forecasts tailored to your location, a live weather radar, plus up-to-the-minute details on road conditions. All you have to do is download our Channel 3000 First Alert weather and traffic app. Wisconsin elections officials are refusing to name a handful of local clerk's offices that testing showed may be vulnerable to cyber attacks. The Elections Commission asked all 2,700 local clerks to log into the election system in the summer. And they detected four or five clerks using Windows XP, which Microsoft stopped supporting back in 2014. The Associated Press filed a records request seeking the clerks' names, but the commission was concerned about hackers finding out which ones they were, so election officials say those clerks have all received computer upgrades. More local news now. The Sun Prairie Post Office will be named after a fallen fire captain. President Trump signing the bill to designate the post office on Linaroo Drive. The fire captain, Corey Barr, post office building. Barr was killed responding to the downtown explosion in the summer of 2018. He is credited with evacuating more than 100 people from that area. U.S. Senators Tammy Baldwin and Ron Johnson, along with U.S. Congressman Mark Pocan, introduced a bill to make that change in April. Tonight at 10, we will hear from Barr's wife, Abby, about what that post office designation 
means to her. A correction to a story we ran on Tuesday. We reported the Dane County Regional Airport received a thousand noise complaints from October 2018 to March 2019 and said the majority of them were from military aircraft. The actual number was only 86 calls related to those aircraft out of the 1,000. Next at six, this year's early snowfall may be disappointing for us, but it could be devastating for farmers. We're checking in with a soybean and a corn farmer to see what that October snowfall means for the harvest. Stay with us. The early arrival of snow has put farmers at a standstill harvesting crops. With an already late harvest, Gabriella Becerra shares how the snow affects corn and soybeans. What's already been a wet long year for farmers isn't going to get better anytime soon and the crops are feeling the effects of that. And now with snow, harvest will be pushed back even longer. Snow is kind of what we dread. Snow arrived early this year, interrupting farmers like Nick Venable's harvest. It hasn't been ideal conditions at all. We've been, you know, going probably when we normally wouldn't because of uh, the wet soil and wet field conditions. Farmers have already had a slow year because of the rain. We're able to harvest right after the rain, usually once the fields dry up. But snow brings harvesting to a complete stop. All the snow will need to be melted off um, for us to come in here. And again, then also the ground um, is going to be even more saturated than already was. Not only does snow affect the plant and crop, but also the machinery. And this goes through the combine. The snow will plug up our sieves on the combine. And so then that prevents the grain from falling through and us to be able to capture it. Venable says the crop should survive this current amount of snow. You know, the quality should still hold up. You know, the worry is now with too much of a snow load on causing the crop to call up, fall down and then prevent harvest. So for now, it's all about waiting for the snow to melt. We're going to be yeah into into November tomorrow and uh, a long ways to go yet with harvest. Farmers are hoping to get back out into the fields by next week, but with unpredictable weather, it might be even longer than that. In Janesville, Gabriella Becerra, News 3 Now.
Venable says harvest would normally be completed between now and mid-November, but as of now, he's only about 50% finished. He says he is hoping to finish harvesting before the crop insurance deadline comes in December. Coming up in sports, Badger men's basketball team. They're getting ready to head for their exhibition opener. Down some key players who graduated last year. We'll hear how they're feeling ahead of that game at the Kohl Center. And the snow has cleared out, but we're still dealing with very cold temperatures. Gary shares how long it'll stick around next in your first alert forecast. And Gary's joining us now, and you know we kind of wait for that big snow last year. It seemed, and it's, it's like here. Mid, yeah. And and when it's cold, man, uh, when the snow here, yeah. it, it stays cold. You get too. that snow cover, and that's going to keep temperatures cold. And uh, boy, the snow did pile up in some areas. In fact, uh, we take a look at the latest snow depth, and this is a general approximation. I think there's a little bit more on the western end of this. Uh, but the computer models basically showing about one to three inches or a little bit more through the Madison area and about three to six inches generally through southeastern Wisconsin. There were amounts that were higher than that, but some of this is compacted a little bit and some of it is melted in areas that did get above freezing at least for a couple of hours. But this kind of tells the story. There's our dog Joe out there and you can see the paws starting to come up off the ground, the slushy wet snow, not great for animals being out and walking around in the snow. Heaviest snowfall total I could find is eight inches in Browns Lake in Racine County. Again, the heavier snow totals tended to be south and east of Madison. A lot of uh, six, seven inch uh, reports into eastern Jefferson County, like around Palmyra. Officially, Dane County Regional Airport, five inches of snow, uh, almost five in Beloit, uh, Watertown, Horicon, close to five inches. And then you look out to the west, and even parts of Grant County got a fair amount of snow. Platteville, five and a half inches. Cincinnati, uh, they were up at 6.3. But then you get to Richland Center, they're down to four. Lancaster, three and a half. Linden Station, three. And by the time you get to Boston, about a half inch of snow. Prairie du Chien, barely got a, a little bit of a measurable, measurable snow. But now with the snow on the ground and the clear skies, those temperatures are going to stay in the upper 20s. Wind chill factors could be in the upper teens to lower 20s. 
The rest of the snow is gone. It's heading off to the east. The storm actually intensified right as it pushed through southeastern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. Now the heavier snow is through Michigan and Ohio heading off toward the east and away from us. But the cold air is in its wake. And with 3.9 inches of snow just today, setting a record for Madison and a total of five inches for the storm. It has been a snowy October, eight inches so far for uh, this uh, snow season that we're just barely getting started. Uh, you can see in years past where there was a fair amount of snow through October. Uh, we ended up with generally slightly above average snowfall totals for the winter. Uh, usually we end up about 50 inches. When you get 8 inches to start in October, that gives you a good head start on the entire winter. Temperatures now are in the upper 20s to the lower 30s. Uh, Janesville right now is still at 34, but look at the wind chills. 19 in Wisconsin, Dell, 16 in Waukesha. So there are areas where the wind picks up, those wind chills drop off into the teens. So the trick-or-treaters aren't going to like that. Live view from the Queen Bee Radio SkyCam and Platteville and the WISC SkyCam looking out toward the west shows Mainly clear skies, a beautiful sunset. Capital lit up on the Edgewater Sky Cam, but it is a cold day. In fact, the average high temperature for this time of year is 52. We only made it to 32. Low temperature 27, and we're going to be below that by tomorrow morning, probably close to the upper teens. Right now, our temperature sits at 28 degrees with mostly clear skies. Wind chill 23. The wind's not too brisk right now, but again, it doesn't take much of a wind at temperatures in the 20s to drop those wind chills pretty quickly. So for tonight, skies become mostly clear. It'll be colder. Low temperature dropping to 19. Look for a mostly cloudy day tomorrow. We could see some light rain and snow showers develop in the afternoon with a high temperature of 37. As we check out future track, generally clear skies for tonight, so that'll allow temperatures to tumble into the upper teens with that fresh snow cover. But the clouds start moving in tomorrow. That will bring a chance for some light rain and snow showers in the afternoon. Shouldn't amount to very much with high temperatures in the upper 30s. Nothing additional should stick to the ground. Maybe a couple of flurries tomorrow night, and then Saturday, a fair amount of clouds. High temperatures only in the middle 30s. The 7 to 10 day forecast, those temperatures stay cold because we'll have snow on the ground. Maybe low 40s early next week, and then back into the 30s for much of the week with uh, some flurry chances. We'll have to wait until the following week for any kind of significant warm-up. The Badger men's basketball team says it's time to turn on the bright lights and show everybody what they've got. We'll hear from Dad Davison in sports.
The Badger men's hockey team has a rare Thursday-Friday series at Penn State to open the Big Ten regular season. Tonight's game has already started in State College, and Penn State's already up 1-0. Both of these teams are in the top four in scoring in the country in men's college hockey so far. This Penn State thing looks like it's going to be a different type series than the past two. Um, I think we have the guns to open it up and, and you know, uh, be able to score seven or eight if we need to. But I think more importantly, we got to play a certain way uh, and not get that in our minds that we need to score seven or eight. The Badger men's basketball team will begin the 2019-2020 season tomorrow night with an exhibition game against UW Lacrosse at the Kohl Center just after 7 o'clock. So what should we expect from a team that went 23-11 and last year but lost Ethan Happ, Khalil Iverson, and Charles Thomas to graduation? Brad Davison, Demetrik Trice, and Kobe King, as well as Nate Reavers, figure to anchor this year's team. We'll find out what's up starting tomorrow night. Individually, I think everyone's taking steps, which is definitely the key uh, in the spring, summer, and fall. And I think that that'll kind of drive and force and motivate our team to take that next step, too. Um, whether that's, um, you know, culture-wise, chemistry-wise, um, physically, I think all those steps have been taken. And now it's uh, time to turn the bright lights on and show everybody. The Packers and Los Angeles Chargers will play Sunday afternoon at 325. You can watch the game live on News 3 now. There seems to be growing optimism that Devontae Adams will be back in the Packers lineup. He returned to practice yesterday for the first time since his turf toe injury September 26th. Matt LaFleur says Adams' status for Sunday is still a day-to-day -day thing, but LaFleur says when Adams is ready, the Packers will be ecstatic. Certainly there's going to be some some adjustment and knocking off that rust, I, I'm, I'm assuming. But, uh, you know, he's a pro, and I've, we've got a lot of confidence in him. I mean, I stay, obviously it's going to be, Gonna be a little bit cleaner, maybe a few days into it than when you, the first day back. But I mean, it was good. I've uh, been catching balls and been, you know, been able to move around for a little bit. Charles Woodson and Al Harris will be inducted into the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame in April. The two cornerbacks played together with the Packers from 2006 to 2008. Woodson was part of the Packers Super Bowl championship team in Super Bowl 35 when they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in North Texas. Just how good a season is the Badger women's soccer team having? Well, today they announced the awards for the Big Ten Conference. Forward of the year, Danny Rhodes. Defender of the year, Cameron Bigalski. Goalkeeper of the year, Jordan Bloomer. Coach of the year, Paula Wilkins. Of course, they're all Badgers. Last night, the Washington Nationals won the World Series with a 6-2 win in Game 7 in Houston. The Nationals were 19-30 and early in the regular season, but got hot and won it all for the first World Series title in franchise history and the first baseball title in Washington since the Senators won in 1924. And he had to wonder what might have happened if the Brewers' Trent Grisham would have kept that ball in front of him in right field of the eighth inning of the National League wildcard game against the Nationals. If he did, the game would have been tied 3-3. You never know if it would have changed the eventual outcome, but hmm, what if? A lot um, of what ifs, just right? Saying, just saying. Mm. 104 days till pitchers and catchers report, by the way. Yeah, and if the Cubs had scored a few more runs, too, uh, here and there. <laughs> what know. a Merry Christmas we had. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it feels like Christmas now with all sure the snow does. that we have on the ground. There's the live view from the WIC Sky Cam. Looks like a pretty sunset out there, but boy, with the snow on the ground, the temperature's already in the upper 20s. Bundle up the trick or treaters if they haven't gone out yet or just going out after dinner. Uh, wind chills right now, upper teens to the lower 20s. Look for temperatures to Stay in the 30s for the most part, other than Sunday and Monday, maybe low 40s, and then back into the 30s next week. We should be around 50 degrees for high temperatures. That just gives you an idea how cold it's going to be. Maybe toward the end of next week, we can start to see a warm-up, but that's a ways down the road. Yeah. And be extra careful out there on the roads, right. too, with those trick-or-treaters mm -hmm. and the slick conditions. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.